in practice, we do a lot of angular dynamics problems where we simply look up a formula for the moment of inertia of some particular rigid body. But these formulas all come from somewhere. And what I want to do here is, is illustrate just once how you would actually get one of these formulas. So in this question, we're asked to find the moment of inertia of a rod of mass m in length l rotated about one of its ends. So the little dashed line here is the rotation axis. Again, moments of inertia change depending on where you pick the rotation axis, so you have to be clear about that. So before I get into the calculation, I have to talk a little bit about the concept of linear density. So linear density is normally given the symbol lambda, and that is mass per unit length. So mass over length, or I could say m over l. This also means if you wanted the mass of something and you knew the linear density, you could get that just from lambda times L. So let's look at a quick example. Okay, a chain has linear density two kilograms per meter. So hopefully that makes sense. Every time you pick up a meter of it, that's two kilograms of mass. We want to compute the mass of five meters of this chain. Okay, mass is lambda times L. Two kilograms per meter multiplied by five meters, the meters cancel, and I get 10 kilograms of chain. Linear density is going to be handy when we start to analyze the moment of inertia of this rod. And I'm going to go ahead and pop in a new picture real quick. And our strategy for finding the moment of inertia is going to be to chop the rod into infinitesimal little elements. Then we find the moment of inertia contribution of each of those elements, and then we add them up. So this little length right here is a dx. But I need to find the mass of that little infinitesimal chunk, and that's where the linear density comes in. So my dm here, it's going to be linear density times length, or lambda dx. Now this begs the question, how are we going to find lambda? All I know is that it's a constant density in this rod. The rod has a mass of m and a length of l, well, that allows us to find an expression for lambda. It's mass per unit length, so total mass divided by total length. Okay, so I'm going to move over here and start actually setting up my moment of inertia integral. What I do is I write down, what's the moment of inertia contribution of my little dm? And that's a point mass. So I just take that mass and multiply it by its distance from the rotation axis squared. So it's dm times x squared. But my little dm can be written as lambda dx. But my lambda can be written as m over l. So I get that my little contribution to the total moment of inertia is m over l x squared dx. Now I can get my total moment of inertia by just adding up all the contributions. And that's what an integral does. An integral is just a continuous sum. So I have the sum of all the di's. The integral of m over l x squared dx as x goes from its starting value here at 0 to its finishing value here at l. I'm going to pull the m over l in front guess the antiderivative of x squared, which is 1 3rd x cubed, evaluate from 0 to L. When I plug in the lower limit, I, I get 0. Plug in the upper limit, I get an L cubed. So I end up with a 1 3rd out in front, M over L times L cubed, and one of the L's cancels. And it gives me the famous formula, 1 3rd ML squared for the moment of inertia of a rod rotated about its end.